um, okay, good morning, everyone. And then um, it's my great pl pleasure and to present and in this group. Uh, so I want to, uh, today I'm going to talk about um, our recent effort in developing uh, uh, analogical mapping model. Uh, so this is an ongoing project. And then I, uh, with uh, Nick Aiching and Pete Holyoke, and then we'd love to and get feedbacks and comments and from the group. So uh, today, so we are to have two talks, and this is my talk, and we'll mainly focus on a verbal analogy and also uh, set up the stage and for Taylor Webb's next talk in the for visual analogy. So as shown on this slide, and the analogy of problems and the involving analogical reasoning are extremely varied. So we actually can start and then from this very simple kind of geometric shapes. And then the reason about them and in the Ravens progressive matrix. So this actually will be the main topic in Taylor's uh, talk. And then we also can move to a uh, stimuli and then with more uh, with richer and the semantic meanings. And then we can reason about the relations with objects and the social, even the social relations and between people. And then we can reason uh, about with verbal input and in this A, B, C, D and the types of questions. We also can ask the creative questions to young children as Doug Gander did, if the tree and the high the key and the where would it be? And then eventually, and we also can move on and the two more complex and the abstract uh, concepts. And for example, and to do analogy and between the general story and the radiation problem and the uh, a relationship and between the solar system and the atom system. So ideally, and we would like to have a domain and a general model, and that can deal with all these analogy problems. So in the literature, and there are many analogy models. I roughly group them and into and two approaches. So the first approach, and then um, it's to uh, has been dominated and in cognitive science in the past four decades. So then for these types of the problems. And then we consider an analogy as an inference problem and then through and a relate a representation matching. So in uh, so specifically, an analogy is to find the correspondences and by comparing and the structure of the relational representation of analogies of, uh, of the source and the uh, uh, target. So there are many different types of the representations and used to create an analogy model. So for example, an SME and then I use this and the classic symbolic representation for, for, uh, for uh, propos uh, proposition and the use and the discrete symbols and the for graph matching. And then in contrast, then the Lisa and the uh, subsequent Dora models, and then they use and the distributed representation coupled with the specialized connectionist architecture. So despite there are many differences among these models, but they share the common basic characteristics, for example, and the relations are explicitly represented as a node or predicate or a substructure of the network. An analogy is based upon comparison of the structure, the knowledge, and the between the analogs. So in recent years, and there is the second types of approach and emerge largely from the uh, artificial intelligence community. So in, especially in past four years, a number of AI models uh, has um, been developed by treating analogy as an end-to-end -end learning problem. And these types of the models and they tend to use a supervised neural network style training on a massive number of analogy problems. So the advantage of these types of the model is to be able to directly communicate and with the raw input for example, and the pixels and the images and the, or the words and the, in the text. And so eventually and the converge the two analogy solution here. So the efforts and from our end is really on trying to explore and the possibility of combining and the different aspects of both approaches. So what we want to do is to take advantage of the recent advancement and in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And then the model can automatically and generate and semantic vectors to represent the relations as well as concepts 
and so that and we can minimize and the involvement of the hand coding features. And also that these types of approach and also can help us and to deal with the raw non-structure and input such as pixels and word. Then the second part is that we continue under the tradition we still to consider analogy as a struct uh, as the uh, relation uh, representation mapping and the through structured representations. So we're trying to represent analogs as attributed graphs here. So in this attributed graph, and we use and the numerical values and the, to represent the attributes and the individual concept that can form the node for this attributed graph. And then we can use the numerical vectors as to represent the relations to serve as the edges and in this attributed graph. So then we're, we explored in a probabilistic method and we try to identify the mapping and the between these two attributed graphs by maximizing a measure of the similarity between graphs. So at the end, what we, uh, this type of probabilistic approach and it will help us and to cope with some mapping ambiguity and also some uncertainty arises from semantic representations. So I will show some of the simulations and to, uh, 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 to show the advantage of using the probabilistic mapping method. And so eventually what we hope that uh, we can achieve under this domain general uh, analogical mapping and without extensive directly training and in, uh, analogy problems. So hopefully we can achieve so-called zero-shot learning and in the AI literature. So what, are, what, what did we do? So let me just start in the from a simple example. So in this case, and we take the non-structured input and basically and the three words as a source and then three words as a target. And then what's the output uh, of this analogy model and through the uh, analogy processing. So eventually we hope and that we can discover and the uh, relationship and the correspondence of the words and the, between the source and the target. So we can see on the rifle to gun to weapon is analogous as beagle to dog and to mammal. So in this talk, I will use this kind of a graphic uh, representation and to, uh, to describe, to illustrate and then our model here. So the different nodes and the indicates an individual concept, the edges and indicates the relations between the concept, and this red arrows and indicates the final mapping result. So how will you do it? The first step and we need to uh, uh, get the representation and for the individual concept. So what we did is to adopt the word to back model and developed by Michael Lobb and, and his colleagues. The basic idea is to uh, uh, get the understanding and using and the, these uh, densely distributed and the vector representation to represent the meaning of the individual concept. So now you can consider under the word to back model, it provides us a transformation to convert and the discrete token of each word and into a numerical vector representation. So we can get the word embedding here. So now from this vector representation, and what's happening here is that we can recover a continuous and a semantic space. In this multi-dimensional semantic space, the words and they have the similar meanings, and then they tend to locate and in the adjacent regions because all these vector values they are similar. But if the word and they have different meanings and they tend to be far away from each other. By projecting and then this piece creates the word tokens and into this continuous semantic space that provide us a handy way to compute the similarity of the concept and in this semantic space. Now next, and then we're trying to figure it out is how to rep represent the relations. So what we use is uh, the model uh, called an Bayesian analogy and the relational transformation part model and developed it in our group. So given another time constraint, I'm not going to get into detail to talk about the learning process in bar model. I will just show you how we use bar model and to get the relation representation for any pair of so the basic idea of the BART model is to train a pool of the relations. 
And through the training, and then what we eventually will get to the bar model, you can give any pair of the words and to the bar model, for example, love and hate. And then the bar model will output a distributed on the relation vector. Each element in this relation vector is the estimate of the posterior probability. How likely, and this word pair, love and hate, and instantiate the class inclusion relations. And the second one could be how likely under this word pair and instantiate the part pole relations, and then contrast relations, and so on. So in the ways you can think about the bar model, also provide a transformation to convert a pair of word tokens and then into a continuous and a relation space. So now in this semantic relation space, and in each dimensions and the correspond to a specific and a trained relation. And then the location of a pair of the words and then comes from this relation factor. So what's happening here is that even though hot and warm and very different and from a house and home and in, in the semantic space, but in the relation space, these two pairs and they are close to each other because and these two pairs instantiate the similar set of the relations. So the BART model you can consider here, it really provides a transformation and then to, to get and from a pair of uh, word tokens and into and this continuous representation in this relation space. Now, when we are, when we are uh, able to create and this type of vector representation for any pair of the word, now we can easily compute under the similarities of the relations instantiated uh, by these two words. And also the nice thing about this using a continuous space and it represents uh, relations, it also can help us and then uh, to capture some uh, refined uh, characteristics in the, in the relation representation. So not only we know and whether these two pairs of words are instantiate the same or different relations, we actually can look into and more details about the, uh, some characteristics in the relation representation. So here is the example. When we look at what I'm showing here is four pairs of uh, words, uh, uh, four pairs of words and the instantiate kind of related to the contrast relationship. But on the other hand, they actually have different typicalities, so hot, cold, and kind of the more typical pairs to instantiate the contrast and then, then the other uh, three uh, word pairs. When we look at and then the uh, relation vector and the distribution, one interesting uh, observation is that the hot and cold, and then this vector, the, the values is more concentrated and to the contrast and the related uh, relations. But if we, with the reduced uh, typicality, for example, we go to happy and sad, and then other relations also tend to get to the non-zero and the posterior probability. So this like pattern will become more distributed. So these types of the, using the continuous and numerical values of vector representation for relations will help us and to capture and the gradients of the typicality and the rich semantics um, behind the relation. So now after we use the word to vect and then to, represent, to get the semantic representation for the individual word and the bars and the, to get and the relation representation between a pair of the word, now we can create a so-called the semantic relation network. And then in this case, and each node, and then they come from the individual concept, the attributes and associated with each node and come from the word to back embedding. And the edge and indicates the relations and between a pair of the word and the attributes associated with the edge and come from the part and the relation vector. So now in this case, and then each of the uh, each of the source, and then we can create and this semantic and relation network. And then so we can use the same pipeline and to create the semantic relation network for the source and the semantic relation network and for the target. Now the next step, and after representing the, the analog, then we can move on and to the mapping stage. So now in this case, and we have two and the attribute to the graph and the G and the G prime and the for the source and target. And the logical mapping, the goal is to find the mapping matrix so that we can find the corresponding matches and between the words and the, across the analog. So from the Bayesian perspective, and we're trying to infer 
the posterior probability distribution for this mapping matrix, giving another two or three derivative graphs from the source and the particle. So the mapping matrix is presented in a probabilistic manner. So here I gave an example and using just arbitrary numbers here. So in this particular case, I mean, both the source and targets, they have three words. And so the mapping matrix will become a three by three matrix. Each element in this mapping matrix and indicates what's the probability that rifle and the correspond to beagle. So here is 0.9 probability, but also you have 0.1 probability and the rifle and they match to dog. So the goal of this inference and is to um, try to estimate under this mapping matrix and from the input of these two attributed graphs. So how do we do it? So we can go back under to the uh, standard base rule. We can decompose under this posterior probability and into the likelihood term and into the prior term. So in this inference uh, engine, and what we need to deal with is this kind of mapping ambiguities. So here, and this actually is a very good example. For example, we want to map and then this edge and the gun to weapon and in the source and to the target. So the gun to weapon and the instantiation is the membership to category relations. This edge actually have pretty high probability to map to all these three edges and in the target. So in order to solve for this ambiguity problem in mapping, we do need constraints and in this uh, inference um, um, process. So we incorporate the constraints and by defining the likelihood and the prior term. So in likelihood term, and then that will be defined on the based upon the similarity between these two attributed graphs. So there are the two pools of the similarity contributed and to the likelihood term. And the first one is the similarity and from the relations and the weighted by mapping probability. The second term is the similarity of the concept and the weighted by the mapping probability. We also have a parameter alpha that's controlled the relative contribution and from the relation similarity and the concept similarity and to the likelihood term. And then we also introduce a constraint and through the prior term on the mapping matrix. And specifically, we're using an exponential distribution and to capture under the preference to isomorphic, basically one-to-one -one mapping and then in analogy. So just to recap, and then what we're going to do is to take under then this non-structure uh, input, and then so basically a set of the words and in the source and target. And we use and the word to that and the bar to, to create and this semantic relation network as a tributary graph. And then we're going to use a probabilistic analogic mapping and to solve and for the mapping correspondence problem. So I will show the first simulation and that actually we are going to show the uh, same, this kind of triplet pairs and to humans and, uh, and the model. So this is the experiment that we have done. And then we show a human subject and the six words on the screen. And then we ask the human participant and then to place and the, each of the words and into the corresponding uh, location. So this actually is the reporting of the uh, uh, participants and the responses and one pro for one problem. So first, and then the participants move dog and to the middle location. And then to the big O and then to the third location and the memo and then to the first location to form this analogy uh, pairs. So in the, uh, for the experimental materials, we create the two types of the triplet uh, problems. And the one is a category triplet and that includes the super ordinate, uh, ordinate category and intermediate level and the sub, uh, sub uh, ordinate level. And the second type, and then we include the triplet, is the part whole relations as the first relation and object location as the second uh, relation. So each participant and the complete the two uh, triplet analogy problems, one for each type. And then when in this case, and then the dependent measures, and then it's just to measure how what's the accuracy uh, for this mapping task. If the mapping uh, accuracy is 100%, then we got all, all correct. And then if it's a chance level, and it will be one third. So it's turned out and uh, overall, and the human participants, and then uh, th these are the participants and the, uh, 
uh, recruited on the ground crawl. I think, and then they reached something uh, overall mapping accuracy and close to 88%. And then, so I've shown another in, uh, in this gray box, and then these are the human performance. And for the model performance, it's actually getting close and then to humans and mapping accuracy. And then so these orange bars and they come from and the using the bars vector and as the relation representation, and then we use a pan as the mapping um, process there. So what I also want to show you is the one baseline model uh, performance. So to, to, to show you is that the relation representation is actually very important. So for this uh, baseline model, what we did was still maintain on a pan as the mapping engine, but for the relation representation, instead of using the bar vector, and we use the generic operation, we take the difference vector and between the word uh, to that word embeddings between the two words, and the two represent the relations. We use the word to that and the difference of the vector as the relation representation for the edge. So in that case, and then as shown in these blue bars. If we change the relation representation to work with a difference uh, vector, and the performance is much decreased, and then much worse than human performance, and especially and to the types of the problem, like the category triplet, which has more mapping ambiguities, and the model performance actually is getting much worse. So what I also want to show you is that these types of model simulation can not only can capture and the overall accuracy, it also can capture and some refine and the behavior patterns. One interesting result that we found that if we look at the mapping accuracy for individual words, and then this mapping accuracy can change and for the different concepts, for example, and in the category triplet problem, the worst performance, mapping for performance, comes from the second word. So this is the kind of expected because the second word can play the role of the category. And then for, and also can play the role of the membership. There is a large ambiguity. But if we, if we change and then the problem type and the into and the part object the location triplet, and then the worst performance come from the part word and the best performance come from the location word. So these types of the difference actually can be captured qualitatively by the model and the, uh, model results. So now in this, the first simulation, I think it's showing the promising results and that and this type of probabilistic mapping uh, algorithm and, and the relation representation can work together and to solve this triplet problem. And now the question is that whether and then the framework and can be extended and to more complex situation. For example, when we have like more number of concepts and then in the analogs, whether the model can deal with this kind of larger scale problem. So in the second simulation, and what we look into is to use under this science analogy and uh, analogical metaphor data set created by Turney. So in this data set, and then I include under 20 very different analogy problems. So that include the famous and the solar system to atom and the uh, water flow and the heat flow and so on. But the one interesting property is that this is different from what we used to do under the past descriptions about the solar system and the two atom system. Turney and then represented them each of the analog and using a set of keywords. And then he created that this uh, keyword during you know, five to nine words and per uh, analog. So for the solar system, and then that's captured by these nine keywords here and the item system and captured by the other nine keywords. He actually showed and then these two sets of the keywords and to both human subject and the model, and then try to get the mapping accuracy. So this is the second simulation we want to look into and to see whether model can be extended and from the three uh, concepts and the two nine concepts and the more and the more relations involved in the different situations and also for us, and the different types of the analogy problems. So what we are doing is pretty much use the same pipeline. So the input change, and then we go from the three keywords and to nine keywords, and then but we still use and the word to that and the bars and to create and this semantic relation network. 
So now, because of the increase of the concept, and the network is getting more complicated, but we still can adopt the same idea and from the uh, probabilistic analogical mapping and to solve the analogy uh, problem and try to map and the corresponding and the concept across the analog. And then from the model and uh, output of the mapping result, and then we can calculate you know, the mapping accuracy. So what's showing here and the gray bars and the comes from the human and the mapping accuracy for each of these analogy problems. So orange bars and come from the PAM performance. On average, and the human's mapping accuracy is about 88%, and the PAM and the reach something about 80%. So this actually showed the promising results that these types of computational models can be scaled up and to deal with a more complicated situation. But so far, and then in both simulations, all these keywords are handed and the two, uh, to a PAM model. And then now the next step, what we want to uh, uh, um, try to explore is more related to the raw input and with the text descriptions. So for this model, what we're trying to do is that now we can take under the text descriptions and use the, uh, the human experiment studies. And then we can use a natural language processing algorithm to extract the keywords and from this text description. Now we pretty much can adopt and the entire pipeline, as I mentioned earlier. So to test and this, uh, uh, this idea, so what we look into um, the, the problem, the third simulation, and we're trying to figure out the mapping and the text input, and we use and the uh, general story and the radiation problem from Jacob and Holyoke and study. So we take and then this text description about the general story, and then pass through the keyword extraction algorithm, and then we can extract the 14 keywords and from this general story. And then we, uh, for the radiation problem, we can extract the 10 keywords and from the uh, radiation problem. And there is also a very interesting test for the model because in the first two simulations, and the source and the target, they have the same number of keywords. They have a perfect isomorphic and the mapping results and the waiting there for time to discover. But when we get into the real situation like the Jake and the Holyoke uh, study material, and then they have the different number of the keywords and then in the source and the target, and also, there is not a perfect isomorphic re uh, uh, result and the weighting there. So some items and then can be mapped, and that some items may not be mapped and then in this case. So now this actually will become a very interesting test and for the model and whether the model is robust enough and to deal with the situations that we don't have a perfectly isomorphic solution. So as it turned out, the model did pretty well. And then among all these concepts, the, all these seven key concepts that the model has found, and then correct the correspondence, for example, commander and the doctor, and the army and the array, and the fortress and the tumor, and so on. So this part then actually looks promising. So now the next step we're trying to do is to look into the other types of phenomena and then discover the you know, analogy literature and to see and then whether we can adopt the model and to look into how this model can account under these behavior patterns. Um, meanwhile, I realized that I only have two minutes left, so I will quickly uh, brush through and uh, what we have done, but all the details and I think people can find uh, from the archive uh, preprint uh, pre paper and then I put it in the extract. So the, in the simulation four, we, what we look into that uh, whether and the way we would be able to map it in the in the situation and the way the uh, mapping ambiguity and then whether we can use and the different emphasis and the, to a sub network to influence and the mapping results. So specifically, we look into the uh, uh, behavior finding, empirical finding of the pragmatic influences on analogical mapping and by Spellman and Poli. So in this study, and that I shown and in this kind of graphical representation, the materials of the experiment are some kind of science fiction stories, and including and the countries and their economic uh, and the military status. 
So now the um, main manipulation is that in the planet one, there are three countries and specifically they're bare boots and it's poor and about has a strong military power. And then in planet two, and they have four and, uh, countries here. And now we are to ask the human participants and then to map and the bare blue and the one of the country planet one to one of the countries in planet two. So there is a large ambiguity. So it turns out and then they almost have equal probability and the bare blue are mapped to the hunger because it's poor and it's received under the economic aid and as was showing under that in the planet one. But the bare blue also have the equal probability to map to the male power because it has strong, both has a strong uh, military status and provided the military aid and the, to the other country. So this actually confirmed that in the human uh, result, if you don't give any kind of preference, and then it turns out to have the equal probability to map the bare blue hungry and male power. Now in the experiment, what you can introduce and the preferences or biases, for example, if you do the cover story, and you can tell the participants to pay attention to the military related uh, factors. So you give the emphasis and then to the military and the male power, and then this additional pragmatic information, and it can break, uh, can break down, can break out of the tie here. And that's strongly on the push on the human participant and to map and the bare blue and the to male power. And of course, by way, and then you can uh, ask the human participants and to pay attention, to economic and kind of related situation, uh, and also hunger related status. And then that also will push the mapping and to the opposite direction. So now for the PAM simulation, what we did is to introduce and then this attention weight. And when the military status is emphasized, and then the contribution of the relations and involving the military, and then we'll be giving a scalar factor. So that their contribution and to the likelihood of uh, calculation will be amplified. So by using uh, this attention weight, and we can introduce an influence of the sub network and to the final mapping results. So it turns out the time actually can predict and then this shift and the, uh, the pragmatic influences on mapping. And also interestingly, to our surprise, in the original human uh, results and that there is an asymmetry and then when you emphasize uh, military and then there is a more uh, there is a larger difference and then between and then these map to mapping uh, solutions and then when you emphasize economic and then the difference is actually smaller and these types of asymmetry is actually captured and by the model and the base the 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 key things are actually comes from and the understanding about the rich semantics of the different concepts. So. so I would love to spend more time with the last simulation because it's, I think it's a beautifully done and study. Um, but I will quickly just go through this. And then what, what we're trying to see is that and the weather and the model also has the ability to account for relational shift and the economic development. And by trying to see on the weather the model could perform and in the materials and by uh, Gander and the Cuban and on this um, uh, on this uh, interesting study uh, with the finding of the relational shift. So in this case, I'm I'm not getting into the detail. I just quickly flash and the results here and also set up the stage and the payload. So in this study, and then there are two uh, independent variables, and one is related to and the structure of the uh, semantic relation network. It's the systematic versus non-systematic condition. And another factor is to manipulate and the, the semantic similarity of the concept between the source and the target. The, in, the, in the high situation, and then the, all these uh, concepts, and they are semantically similar, and then we, we can reduce and this semantic similarity to the medium level and to the low level. So the one interesting finding is that and the mapping results and for the model here and actually can be influenced and through the interaction of the two factor here. So that's actually qualitatively consistent and the ways the children's behavior and in the, in the dependent measures and in the study. But the, another interesting thing here is that 
when I uh, when I define under the uh, likelihood um, uh, function, and then I said there are the sim based on the similarity of the graphs, there are the two pools of the similarity, and the one from the relation, another one is from the concept. So we have a parameter I need to control the relative contribution here. So now in this simulation, we actually can manipulate the uh, value of this alpha parameter. When the alpha parameter is high, and then I use three, that indicates a more focus than the two and the concept of similarity. So the model's performance is similar as the younger children. When we reduce the alpha value, that means a more focus on the two the relation similarity. And the model and the started to be shifted to more on the relation processing. So just, just to sum up, uh, and then in this case, and then I, uh, human like and then analogical mapping and then emerge from a comparison mechanism applied to rich and semantic representations. So I think that's our original idea to start to explore and the possibility of hand model. And then we also find that the distributed representations capture in the semantic richness of the relations and the concepts. And that's the good thing, for example, the typicality of the relations and so on. But the meanwhile, it also can introduce uncertainty and ambiguity in the two analogical mapping. To cope with this uncertainty and ambiguity, we think in a probabilistic mapping and that can provide us a very natural way to handle uncertainty so that to increase the robustness of analogy. So even though in the PAM models and take different representations for relations and from all the previous models in the, in the, in the approach of the representation matching, but we do think and we also are provide the consistent evidence as all these uh, representation and the matching models. And then just to show that and the reasoning by analogy, but not necessarily require intensive training with analogy problems. It can be achieved by a domain in the general system. So I will stop here. And then, uh, sorry for a little bit longer than planned. Uh, so meanwhile, I will just uh, I hope like this talk also set up the stage and the four tenders talk, and which actually will provide a more interesting result. And then just to showing my uh, last simulation result when the alpha can be optimized and for a specific task, you will see some very interesting simulation results from this talk.